Not one, but two games tonight for Monday Night Football. We've got the Ravens and the Buccaneers. We've got the Chargers and the Cardinals. Welcome, everyone, to Props and Parlays today. I'm Andy. That's Andrew. We're going to break down both of these games from a props perspective. No time to waste, Andrew. Let's get right into it. And uh, we're having a lot of fun with uh, the, the, the code word of the day for the comment section. So if you guys could just quickly hit the like button, leave a comment, tell me your best bet that you love in uh, love for, for the games tonight. If you don't, just type a certain word. So, Andrew, I'm going to let you decide. Ready? Just tell me when to stop. Anytime. Stop. Glue. Your code word in the comment section is glue. If you don't have a great take on the on the games, just type the word glue. It's it's a game we do. It really helps the algorithm out. Let's wait. Just talk. No, we're doing a good job. Uh, it works. Gonna, it works, man. Um, we're going to start with uh, the Ravens of Buccaneers. We're going to go through each category, and then we're going to do the Chargers and the Cardinals, and we'll do each category for that. Um, so uh, let's just start with uh, the passing props here, Andrew. Uh, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson here. Uh, what are your takes on uh, passing yards or passing touchdowns for these two guys? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, the over one and a half passing touchdowns for uh, for Baker Mayfield. Uh, I think it's a reasonable number there at minus 120. Six and two to the last eight games for him to the over uh, on this player prop. And, you know, it seems like with, with this Bucks team, when, when they have a good game, they put up points. And when they're putting up points, a lot of the times with Baker, they have at least one, if not two, like decent length touchdowns, whether it's a 20, 30, 40 yarder. They're not really finding themselves on the goal line very often, Andy. And when that's the case, you find yourself passing the, the ball quite a bit. Um, the games that he went under recently was that ugly, disastrous loss against Denver uh, and then their 2016 loss against Detroit, but against the Saints, Falcons, Philly, um, Washington, Detroit, uh, it, they, they're having a good time passing this ball. So I'll go with that one. And uh, this, to, this one to me is kind of like a buy low one here. I'm going to go with the over uh, pass attempts for Lamar Jackson at 28 and a half. Um, you know, but putting it this way, I think that, again, it's a buy low spot. But when you talk about the running game that they have, when you talk about the fact that he's a quarterback that can run the ball himself, when you look at the Bucks defense, you know, and how they can be a little bit, um, you know, tough to get a read on whether they're going to have a good run defense game or not. 28 and a half is just a low number and put it in perspective. Look at the mat. Look at the matchup comparison against Baker Mayfield being at 35 and a half. I'm buying the dip here. I know they got a great run game. I know Derrick Henry has been unbelievable. They have multiple options. And of course, Lamar is a quarterback that will run as well. But I think the dink and dunks are there. The tight end usages are there. They're not a team that's really throwing long bombs and getting up the field fast. And if that's the case, you meet, you need a bunch of throws to get to the end zone. And uh, I feel like any game the Buccaneers are involved in, it seems to be a pretty exciting one, a back and forth one with lots of points. So over 28 and a half passing attempts for Lamar Jackson. I'm with you about uh, trying to figure out a way to to make some money off of Baker tonight. Just looking at these, I mean, the passing yards per game stat compared to rushing is just, it's really amazing because Baltimore, they give up 275.7 yards per game passing. And then you look at rushing 59 and it just feels like it's a perfect matchup for Tampa because they don't run the ball a lot. They don't commit to the run. They've got what three running backs that are going to see work tonight. And so if you're Tampa, why would you even force the running? I mean, you have to run it a little bit just to keep them a little bit honest. Uh, but Baker over 257 and a half is uh, where I'm looking at uh, passing yards. Here's the other thing, Andrew, um, Baltimore, they, they, so they give up 275 per game, 337 on the road in three games. So on the road, they've been involved in some pretty, pretty amazing uh, quarterback performances. So uh, I, I like Baker. I, I believe Evans has been cleared is going to play tonight. So you get a healthy uh, Godwin. It looks like Rashad white is going to play. He's a great, you know, receiving option there. So I, I think, I think this is just a big, big passing night for Baker Mayfield. So I will go over there and you, you mentioned the pass attempts and, Listen, if I like Baker to go over 257, yeah, I'm going over his uh, pass attempts, even though it's, you know, 35 and a half. It's it's a lot, but he had 36 last game. Um, Atlanta, he only had 24, but before that, 47 against Philly. So he can do it when they get in these shootouts. And I, this, is, this, to me, screams shootout. What's Lamar's record against NFC teams? It's like 22 and one. 
So you know, you know, Baltimore is going to be able to to put up points. So uh, I'm with you uh, that this that the quarterbacks should should do well tonight. So let's take a look at rushing props. Uh, I mean, Derrick Henry is going to be the, like <laughs> it's just like you just know what the obvious plays are going to be. Uh, you know, from the general public, I'm not going to get there because I really try and avoid what I think the what I think the the, the public's going to be on. So. I will not be playing Derrick Henry. I will tell you I'm looking really, really hard at Rashad White under 26 and a half. He's banged up. He's not a great runner. He's a much better receiver. And it looks like they've really found something with uh, the other two running backs. So it's, a, it's a really, really low total, but the guy's averaging. He's not even averaging four yards per carry this year. So what, what is he going to have to get seven or eight carries against this defense? Uh, yeah. It's kind I mean, of the Baltimore's only Baltimore's defense is cr- rush defense is insane. Like it's absolutely, ins- <laughs> it's ins- I, I, every time I look at these numbers and I open the page up, I, I don't even understand. Last three games averaging 68 yards against overall 2024, 59. It's wild, what does that even it? mean? 59. No wonder his number is 26 and a half. 59 is insane. So sign me up for that exact one. Rashad White under as well. Oh, nice. Love it. Love it. Um, the other one I was going to uh, throw out there was potentially maybe looking at Baker Mayfield over three and a half rush attempts at plus 110. He's he's kind of started rushing the ball a little bit more. Three for 29, six for 42, and four for 10. Um, he had none against Denver, but against Detroit, five for 34. Kneel downs count. So if you if he happens to be ahead at the end and kneels, uh, if, if it's the end of the half and they kneel, you're getting a couple sneaky easy ones there so um but if they're going to throw the ball a lot that gives baker a few more opportunities to kind of run so uh but it, it kind of the rashad white like seven and a half really eight he's gonna get eight carries tonight against this defense with bucky irving and um you know the the other running backs i don't know uh any other thoughts on any of the rushing props or you just like rashad uh, white unders yeah I, I mean i like that under i just feel like you know you mentioned you know we don't want to get too caught up in like oh what's the popular play going to be but that one seems like kind of a cool one because who's who's betting an under 26 and a half for a guy like that i feel like nobody would want to you know oh it's only 26 and a half well if you look at what the other team is doing on defense lately you don't really want to bet any overs on rushing props but uh well, there's a guy, Andy, that's really stuck out to me with um, receiving props but now i'm going to take his rushing and that's Ooh. justice hill Oh, Justice Hill. Okay, so for him with his attempts, like if he only needs like two or three attempts uh, for him to get over a certain number. But if you look at the number that they're that they're giving him uh, for r- rushing yards, I- I'm shocked. I mean, because it's 11 and a half right now, and going over the last couple of games for him, we've seen two, so that's a loss. 17, 18, 33, 22. So what that tells me is that if he gets, I think if the goal here is three rushing attempts. That's the magic number for us. Three rushing attempts gets us well over the number. Uh, and again, it's kind of like that low hanging fruit, 11 and a half. You've got, you know, you got Derrick Henry, 87 and a half. I think if you get, you know, get me one or two touches mixed in there for Justice Hill, he's going to go over this number. So like the games that he hasn't gotten over this, it's one of those ones, Andy, where you can kind of just look at yourself and be like, well, he didn't get the ball. Like he he got the ball one time um, and, and that's when he, why he went under. But I think that that's a really good play for tonight over 11 and a half for Hill. And and what's good about that is, you know, that doesn't really get impacted by the game script. You know, uh, a team being down a lot, like if the Ravens were down a lot, maybe Derrick Henry doesn't get the ball a ton and get those yardages. But down or up, I think Hill could get over 11 and a half. Love it. Let's move on to receiving props. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, there's a couple, Andrew, that I just love. Um, it's, it's, it's Rashad Bateman at 34 and a half for me. Um, I, I, this is, this checks all the boxes for like, just something like, like you said, nobody's betting under on Rashad white. I, I don't think Rashad Bateman gets people that excited, but he's become a big part of this offense against Cincinnati he had eight targets, four catches for 58 yards um, against Washington. Four targets, he catches all of them for uh, 71 yards. Against Buffalo, he only had one catch, but that game got so out of control. They're they're not throwing. Before that, three for 28, three for 40, and two for 53. This is a guy that's really been getting it done. Um, you know, Zay Flowers is you know look at Zay Flowers, 61 and a half. I would so much rather take Bateman at 34 and a half rather than. 
Zay Flowers at 61 and a half. Like, yeah, Flowers is probably the number one, but you can't argue with the targets uh, that Rashad Bateman has been getting there. And then I I do love uh, Cade Otten here at uh, uh, 38 and a half. Um, I actually may lean a little bit more to his, uh, just for his receptions though, Cade Otten. Um, the reason is the Ravens, uh, let me pull up the, the tight end stats here. So the Ravens, uh, second worst against tight ends. They're giving up 72.6 yards to tight ends this year. Um, so if we think Baker Mayfield is going to be throwing a lot, and we know the Ravens are not very good <laughs> against uh, a tight ends. And look, you know, the books have three and a half, but pretty juice. So they're telling you they would expect him to get to four uh, to four catches. So uh, I like I like K dot here at 38 and a half. Um, any of these, uh, any of these uh, stick out to you? Yeah, so I, I've got him as well. Uh, I like the over 38 and a half. So I'll, I'll, I'll ride with you on that one. I think it's hard not to look towards Zay Flowers right now with his reception prop. I think he's a guy that, like, don't get me wrong, he can hit his receiving because he he is talented at being able to just catch and and go. But sometimes with his size, I worry about him being able to break tackles. <laughs> like, he's not yeah, a big he's... dude, so you kind of want to worry about just him racking up those touches. But, um, you know, if we're going to talk about Baker and the fact that, you know, we're expecting him to throw, we also talked about unders on the rushing yards. And I was kind of joking about how unbelievable the rushing defense is uh, for the Ravens. So it kind of leads me to looking at Rashad White over two and a half receptions, uh, 11 of his last 14 home games played in Tampa. He's hit this and uh, 15 of his last 19 games overall. He's gone over 15 and a half receiving yards. So a um, couple dink and dunk, couple dump offs, and uh, we cashed that ticket. So uh, it seems like for me today, overall, large scale on the, on the board, I'm staying away from big numbers. I kind of like these small numbers today. It's a, I, That's a great one to get, to get even money on Rashad White. I mean, if they get into a hurry up, uh, you've got to believe he's going to be out there. And that's, you, you can hit that on. That's the, that's the Alvin Kamara where he hits his, yeah. he hits his over receptions on one drive at the end of the first half with all the, the dick and dunk. So uh, I'll tell you, I, would, I had a buddy that had uh Brees hall uh, over Rashad r- rushing yards yesterday. And uh, he, well, everything he had was receiving. So he's like, man, his rushing receiving would have hit on its own with just the receiving yards. It's, <laughs> some, some of these some of these running backs now, they're turning into kind of just the safety blanket receiving, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're going up against, uh, you know, a great defense. I, 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 I would have suggested take Brees Hall over receiving last yeah. night. Of course, that's that's me being completely hindsight, like a complete prick move to do. Like, well, after the fact, I would have told you. <laughs> On but, Monday? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Well, but this is a perfect game, like a Ravens. Like, why would you take over on rushing props? They're the best in the league while they're struggling mightily in passing. So yeah, yeah, you're looking at Rashad White under rushing but over receiving. Like the numbers he, just kind of He just goes for 50 yards on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could happen. I've, yeah, I've, yeah. Hey, listen, when you're I guess it's all sports, but with props you could really look foolish. You could look like a genius and you could look absolutely hideous. Oh, uh, yeah. and, and we're here for it. I'm sure the comment section will let us know <laughs> after tonight's game. <laughs> yeah. If if we looked foolish. So uh, all right, so that's your Ravens and uh, Buccaneers there. Uh, pretty good ways to play those games. So, um, Real quick, guys, if you could hit the like button. Uh, once again, our code word of the day is glue. If you haven't typed anything in the comments section, just take a second. Type the word glue. really helps us out. Love hearing from you guys. Love hearing how you guys are doing and what your plays are. Uh, so uh, I love reading it, but I always respond to as many as I possibly can. So I uh, got some good stuff over at Wager Talk. I have my NFL play of the week. Uh, that play has been up all week, and it goes off tonight. So uh, this is not something that I just put up this morning. The play of the week, it's been my favorite all week that um, happened to be on Monday Night Football. So encourage everyone uh, to go grab that. Having a really, really good year, all sports. Uh, coming off a one and one day in the NFL, so only had two plays. Tonight's play of the week will uh, hopefully get us to 2-1 and one for uh, our third straight profitable week there. Um, Andrew, wait. Can you can you explain what the NHL schedule makers are doing when they do these games where they have one game 
and, and like, and then like the next day, there's like 18 of them. Like, it's hard to put yeah. up NHL plays when they do that. Why do they do stuff like that? I don't get. Yeah, it. it's my it's my bread and butter right now. And uh, as people are finding out that um, right now on the show, I've I've got a bunch of plays I like in the NFL. We're kind of narrowing it down. I'm I'm really diving in, and I'm gonna have a package up uh, here after we record this. But NHL, you know, they're doing and they're doing NHL Prime Mondays. So the league decided to sponsor oh. with Prime Prime Video, Amazon Prime. I'm not going to lie. The broadcast actually looked really good last Monday. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure if it's going to be one game a day every Monday. But uh, way to go, NHL. Way to compete with the NFL um, on Monday Night Football. But, yeah, that that's the reason I can give you for that. But, yeah, I mean, Tuesdays and Thursdays are back to being massacres. But I, I know this is an NFL show, but I'll say one thing, and I know that you like the little tidbits like this, Andy, I've told myself this year, I'm not going to ignore the smaller slates. Last year, I was a big Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday handicapper. This year, I'm going to make money on Wednesdays. We're going to release plays on Fridays. We're not going to forget about Sundays because, you know, you, you'll hear people like, wow, we got 13 NHL games today. Let's make some money. But the days that there's two games, you can also make money. But nobody really yeah. cares about the NHL that day. But uh Last 30 days, we're number one at the website. Uh, feeling pretty good about it. Uh, 54% and plus 18 units. So it's exciting so far. We're protecting the bankrolls. A lot of these plus money team total plays. And um, as you mentioned, just one game tonight, but a lot of games for tomorrow. So I'll have packages up uh, for tomorrow's games. I did not know they were doing the prime thing. That 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 does make sense. But of course, in true hockey fashion, let's go head to head against against Monday Night Football. Of course, <laughs> first time uh, in Canada, man. I've had to deal with that. I'm always saying for you guys that you guys have to deal with all these different channels for for games, and now this is the first time I've had to go on a different app to watch a game. Can't believe it. Well, grab all of Andrew's NHL picks. is off to a great start. Um, I was laughing. I'm number three in NHL for the last three days with one play. Bang. Had one play in the last three days. Let's Cash. go. Cash. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into the Chargers at the Cardinals late game here. We'll start with passing props here. Uh, Justin Herbert and uh, Le- uh, Kyler. I almost said Lamar Jackson again. Uh, Kyler Murray. Uh, what do you think about the passing props for these two? Give me the under uh, on pass completions for Herbert. I'm going to go over the passing attempts first. 34, 27, 18, 20, 26, 17. Those numbers aren't high enough for me overall for what I'm seeing from him uh, to even look at at taking his over for completions. I feel like we need a lot more uh, out of him as far as the attempts are concerned. And then I think this defense is going to be able to kind of give up some stuff on the run. So I'm going to take the under 18 and a half pass completions uh, for him. And... This one is a little bit chalky, but I think it's maybe a parlay piece or something like that. Um, I think Murray under one and a half passing touchdowns is a really good bet. And, it, you know, it's really high juice and you can kind of find a way to try and make some money on it. But I, you look at the way that they're handling it. It's pretty much the opposite of what I was saying uh, on the previous segment about the Buccaneers. Like they find a way to put themselves in a position where a running back has to put the ball in the end zone or their quarterback puts the ball in the end zone. Uh, it's very rare for them that even if even in games they're high scoring, like you go down the list in some of these games that they've actually put up some decent points. Like how do they put up 24 points against San Fran but have one passing touchdown with 30 passing attempts? <laughs> that one kind of shocks me a little bit looking at, at, at this overall. Um, and, and, and I kind of would look towards the Kyler Murray under on passing attempts as well. I think this is going to be a really good run game and you can make some money with running props on the Cardinals tonight. Yeah. There's not a lot of passing props that really, really excite me. I, I was with you. I was like, Oh, sneaky. I'm going to take Kyler Murray under one and a half of this minus minus one seventy five. So yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. only done it once this season. I know they got Marvin Harrison uh, jr. Back, but. Yeah, I'm with you. If this goes bad for the Cardinals, this is just Chargers running the ball a million times. And all of a sudden you look up and the time of possession is just like there's not enough time for Kyler Murray, uh, you know, to uh, to do that. So uh, passing defense here, you know, the Chargers are they're, they're pretty good. They're 11th, you know, 192. I do think a lot of that is because of what the offense does, where they just run the ball, right? you know, a ton. Arizona's 23rd. They give up 220. So um, I think these numbers are pretty dialed in. Um, I do li- I, I like your I like your play on, on Herbert. It's just it's a completely different 
his head's got to be spinning with the, with the different mindset of the two coaches. Like go, going from what he had the last couple of years to Jim Har- Harbaugh has just got to be like <laughs> night and day different. But uh, Matt, you be- see that video that went viral about him, like smacking him around the coach Harbaugh. <laughs> yes. And then, and then the co- it's like, he wasn't used to having a player's coach. Like he wasn't used to having someone that's going to be like hyping him up. <laughs> He's yes. like, why is this guy hitting me? <laughs> yeah. It's harder than the linebackers that I'm, that I'm, that I'm playing. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's kind of interesting to watch the the chargers, but I, I cannot get there uh, on many of the passing props. So we will move to the uh, rushing props here. And I, this may be, this may be a little bit public, maybe chalky, but it's got to be J.K. Dobbins. I, f- I feel like you have to do something with Dobbins. Now, you're obviously rolling the dice big time on his his injury, and ho- hopefully he doesn't get, uh, you know, hopefully he doesn't get hurt. Andrew, the injury bug got me yesterday on a bet. I, I, I had a couple parlay pieces, and my last piece was Jaden Daniels to throw one touchdown. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, that's tough. <laughs> it was, it was so, he, he goes, he goes out, and then like the game's so out of reach. Of, like, of course, he's not coming back. Yeah, uh, didn't even matter. Didn't that even hurt matter. my feelings. It really hurt my feelings uh, that he did not get get over there. But you know, we look at the uh, the the rushing yards in Arizona, one hundred and fifty three per game. Um, they're third worst behind my Colts and the Panthers. So it's just got to be Dobbins. He doesn't have a whole lot of. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of um, competition in the backfield. And I know that uh, Vidal guy got some work, but he seems like a little bit more receiving. And Gus Edwards out against Denver, 25 carries, 96 yards and a touchdown. I think you got to look at his touchdown prop. I think you got to look at his rush attempts over. Um, I mean, it, this is – it's a big roll of the dice. I get it. But uh, 17 and a half, to me, that feels low <laughs> with, with, with lack of competition. It's like yeah. – you know, do you go all in on a player or do you only pick one of them? Like, I mean, if he replicates what he did against Denver last week, 25 carries, 96 yards, a touchdown, there's three for three. Uh, you, you know, he scores his touchdown, you get his rush attempts, and, and you get his yards. So yeah. I don't recommend, for the record, I do not recommend multiple bets on one player. Like one injury and you're out or one, you know, big play or something. So, But I think I would stick with Dobbins over his rushing yards. Uh, what about you? I know this might sound crazy, Andy, and we're not trying to get it carried away a little bit, but can you slide over to where it says alt rushing yards? Yeah, of course. Because when when you look at the, when you look when you look at the games, uh, the game log here for for uh, uh, for Dobbins, <laughs> he either goes nuts or he really really does not get his prop. I'm talking about you know 25 rushing attempts, 96 yards. All right. 17 rushing attempts, 131 yards. Only 10 against the Raiders, 135 yards. Let's look at the losses. 32 yards, 22 yards. I mean, this guy either goes crazy or he doesn't get much at all. And uh, I feel like if you can give me a little sprinkle on that uh, over 90 and a half at plus 130. Ooh, I love I, it. I think that's a nice bet here. Um, look, you're right. It's a popular one, but this seems like a popular one that's worth taking. Um, look, we're not saying he's going to get 25 touches, but we're saying what he does with those, let's say, 16, 17 he might get is going to be enough for him to make some noise and, and get the job done. How about this one? Uh Justin Herbert over on rushing attempts. Not really known to be a rushing kind of guy, eh? Well, on the road, four of his last five games, he's went gone over on his rushing attempts, but also in games where they've trailed, in games where they've needed him to do something, he's actually broken off for one decent run. So over for him, three and a half is kind of tempting. And then James Conner for me, I'm kind of interested in his longest rush. He's good for one big breakout one uh, per game, Andy. That one kind of intrigued me a little bit uh, because he has that in his bag. He has that capability. And 16 and a half being the number with the utilization that he gets, I think he'll go over that one. But let's go 90 and a half over for JK. Let, let's make it a little more interesting than it already is. Well, I, I, I'm i going to piggyback off of that because there, there's some pretty obvious things that are going on here. So Justin Herbert went over his rushing total. In their three wins, Denver, Carolina, Vegas, and then went under three and a half against Kansas City and Pittsburgh. So I I, I think the kneel downs have something to do with that. 
Um, and then it's the same with Dobbins. And here's the thing. The games that he went woefully under his, his rushing, that's Kansas City and Pittsburgh. Right now that's number three and number four for rushing yards allowed per game. Carolina is dead last. Uh, Las Vegas is 23rd and Denver is 11th. So yeah. he, fa- he kind of it, – it, it looks pretty predictable. Like he gets the most out of what the matchup gives him. And if they're up, they're just going to give give him the rock, and that kind of is what we like with these with these props. Is like, can we? What's predictable? Like trying to figure out, you know, trying to figure out the Seahawks wide receivers. Good luck. <laughs> we can yes. week out. It's going to be easier now that DK's, you know, injured. But like before that, it was like, is Lockett going over? Is <laughs> who's getting the long pass? Like, but with 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 the Chargers, I like this team. I like I like being able to predict. So if you think that that uh, Arizona is going to, you know, lose and look terrible again. Um, I did a free video on this game, Andrew, and I, my, my play for that video was the first half for the Chargers. These two teams start off games completely different. Arizona is always down at halftime. They're always down. Uh, the Chargers, they're always up. So it's like one team just seems to be much better at the scripted plays and getting off to a much better start than, than, than the other. So, um, if that holds up tonight, then yeah, the rushing props for the Chargers. I think you're you're absolutely spot on. So. Let's talk some receiving props in this one. It does look like Marvin Harrison Jr. has been cleared, and the books are putting out props on him. Um, any any thoughts on the receiving props for this game, Andrew? I've I've been liking watching Terry McBride play right now. I think he's been a guy that's been it, it's he's kind of like on that. If you're not on if you're not on his props and, and you haven't been, you should. You know, it's kind of like that train you got to hop on. I think him over five and a half receptions is worth uh, worth taking a look at here. And um, you talked about Harrison being back. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually fade him and go under. Uh, I just think the 54 and a half is worth it. They're gonna they're gonna utilize other guys. They're gonna spread the ball around enough that unless he makes that one big catch, I think we're we're safe to go under. I've talked about mostly over so far this show, so I think he's a guy that um, potentially will be a popular bet to the over, and we can kind of be a little contrarian uh, with the under there and. Uh, if you look at the receiving yard numbers, if we're going to take an alternate number over on 90 and a half rushing for JK, well, we're certainly not betting him to catch the ball. <laughs> so let's take the <laughs> under on that one there, Andy. That's it for me. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, there's, I was, I was trying to figure out who I like and who I don't like. And I, Lad McConkey of 52 and a half feels like an awfully big number. I like I'm I'm trying to play the game script out and I'm just I'm like I just keep going back to man how many like times are they going to be actually throwing the ball and like you said if you like Herbert under his completions or you know under his his attempts it feels like there's just not going to be a ton of you know big time receivers and big time receiving numbers and you know Lad Lad McConkey he had four catches last week against Denver, 43 yards. Um, you know, that that's under this 52. The only time he's gone over was against Kansas City. And that's, you know, he had a 37-yard pass in that game. Um, he had five catches there. So, I don't know. I, I can't say it's the strongest, but that number kind of jumped off the page at 52 and a half. Now, that being said, I mean, there's not a lot of wide receivers there for, <laughs> for, the, for the Chargers. So, I think I'm with you with McBride. Um, this is a Chargers team that actually you can you can you can – throw on them with the tight end. They give up the, uh, they give up what, uh, yeah, the second most catches per game to tight ends at 6.4. Only the chiefs give up more, uh, to tight ends. So, you know, for whatever reason they struggle against uh, those tight ends there. So, um, I always find that stuff interesting, like the, the position stuff. Cause I find that there'll be some weekends where I'll read like really into that. And then yeah. some weekends it's like, maybe like, Oh, this team against this position or this team run these, like I, I started looking at, um, I was using certain apps to, or, well, to look at. Well, actually, a lot of those props apps are telling you now with uh, the player routes that they do well against. Like this team shuts down go routes. This team's really good against slants. And then, of course, you're like, OK, I'll take the under on this guy. And of course, he catches a bomb for like 70 <laughs> yards. But it is interesting to look at how certain teams do against certain positions, because especially I find the tight end. If you find a team that's bad up the middle, you can make some money on it. So it's a real good point by you. I think that there's some teams that struggle against tight ends and some teams that really you know do well against them. So it's a good point. I could go through some of them. 
uh, real quick, just kind of some of the, the more obscure ones. Uh, we got, we got a little bit of time here. So, all right. So defense against running backs, we'll talk about teams that allow a lot of receptions and yards to receiving running backs. Jaguars by far the worst. They give 6.7 catches per game for 57.5 yards to running backs. Buccaneers, uh, are, yeah. are actually uh, second 6.5 for 51 yards bills, 6.29 for 54 yards. On the on the flip side, the Dolphins only allow three catches to running backs for twenty yards per game, so they do a good job with that. The Browns are actually next at three point two catches uh, per game for twenty five yards, and the Commanders are next three point four uh, for twenty two point five. You mentioned uh, tight ends; I can go through the tight end rankings here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Chiefs give up uh, seven catches for eighty three and a half yards per game to tight ends. Ravens uh, six point one. For 72 yards, Rams 5.5 for 67 yards. So those are your teams. You might look at taking tight end props against them. Uh, who's great? The Texans, by far the best against tight ends. 2.8 catches, 23.4 yards. You have to look at who they played though. Um, Eagles are next at three catches for 25 yards, and the Lions three and a half catches for uh, 27 point point one yards. So there's some uh, there's some interesting ones and. Uh, let me do running back. Uh, let me do a wide receivers here real quick. Uh, who gives up the most receptions? The Lions, 18.7. Uh, Vikings, 17. Buccaneers, 15.3. And the Jaguars, 14. That surprises me. Jag- I think the Jaguars are the worst secondary in the in the league. Like, Are they the most disappointing team this season? Or which team is it? Because it's... Like I'm they're, not impressed by their win this weekend, there, man. I mean, some Jets fans are certainly jumping up and down in the comment section, uh, saying, well, "Hey, what yeah. about us?" Um, I, to, to me, I to me the Trevor Lawrence thing is bizarre. You know, I'm from Indianapolis, so like when they draft him, I was like, "Oh my god, we got like, <laughs> like seriously, Andrew." A few years ago, think about this: us Colts fans were sitting there going, "Oh my god, we have 12, 12 years with Trevor Lawrence, and then twelve years against Deshaun Watson." Like, like a few years ago, we were like, my God, we don't have a chance. And yeah. now <laughs> Deshaun's, you know, <laughs> you know, gone. And Trevor Lawrence looks like one of the worst quarterbacks in the division. I would say yes, just because you, you go up and down, you're like, okay, they got Trevor Lawrence. Okay, they've got, you know, Travis Etienne, who <laughs> looks like he's lost the starting job. Like, yeah. I think it's, I think it is Jacksonville, man. Like their fall from grace and that I... they just locked in Lawrence's contract. That's another thing. Um, I saw a funny meme. It was like uh, Devonte Adams went from a two and five team to a two and five team, but at least he has friendship. <laughs> it's like at least he has Rogers. And, I mean, that's kind of crazy. I mean, you're right. I, I forgot about the Jets, and I can't believe I forgot about them when I said that because at, at least at, I mean the Jets were like ev- it was like felt like it was like everybody's team they loved coming into the year. And, you know, a healthy Rodgers, how could they lose? Yeah. Right. And and in fact, he might be the reason they are losing. I don't, you know, I I don't know. Maybe they should fire some more coaches. I thought that might have helped them, but uh, I don't know what's going on with that team. Yeah, the Jets at two and five, they've got to be up there. Uh, Jags at two and five, yeah, they have for most def- uh, most. Um, yeah, the Forty ers are three and four. I would say that's 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 a bummer, but the injuries are just they like, have excuses. My God, they have ex- my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see the the other the Panthers at one and six. I, no, oh, 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 that's right. We thought they would be. <laughs> yeah, be. yeah. I think the Jets and the Jags are probably your two nominees. I would lean. Actually, it probably is the the Jets because their expectations were so much higher, um, mm-hmm. and now it's just like looks bad. But yeah, those are probably your 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 two best ones. And so. Um, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. I think, uh, it's pretty good enough on the Monday night, uh, football props. Um, Andrew, once again, tell everyone, uh, like uh, you're obviously doing great in NHL, but also just kind of what the schedule is for NHL this week and what we can expect over at wager talk. Yeah. So we're going to have some props up for Monday night football, obviously two games. So it's nice to have that sample size with two games there. NHL. I already have two games selected, uh, that I'm going to have write-ups for, and you guys can check those out over at wagertalk.com. Uh, hovering around the 13 unit mark uh, on the season, but we did make some money in the preseason. So um, last 30 days, we're up around 19 units overall in the NHL. So super excited about that. 
And uh, don't forget about the CFL. You know, the, the playoffs are almost here. We're making some money in the CFL and uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully another great week. So the low volume has been working for me, protecting those bankrolls and uh, making money that way. And uh, Andy, the UFC has been pretty interesting as well. And I know it's treating you well. Yeah, UFC has been pretty good. We have a very strange event. Starts at like 1030 a.m. <laughs> my time, yeah. which I love. I just, I just love uh, those events. So, um, yeah, we had a decent UFC. We had a, a pretty terrible uh, PFL card. We went one and two, which is uh, really disappointing for us. We've done really, really good in PFL. But UFC continues to be doing really good. Um, I'm really happy with the consistency. Like, if we have a bad week in UFC, it's like like we go one and two or something. So, uh, But most weeks have been really good. Um, live betting was, was, was really good. I did something really different that, uh, we're going to talk about later tonight when we do our betting recap video, we talked about live betting on uh, college football, um, okay. and doing the, doing the live, uh, props on scoring drives. Will a team score or not? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the first time I've done it. I've been told I should get into this market and it was a home run. I mean, literally Andrew, you just find a team that is not very good and just bet on them to not score on every drive. Think, think, think about this. Purdue got shut out. You could have bet on them live to not score on every single drive, and you would have swept the board. (laughs) You would. Is the the, does the price just like gradually get worse, or does it stay the same? Yeah, it starts. It starts like minus one ninety, and then oh, not bad. No, but then now by the second half, it's like minus five (laughs) hundred. So you're not doing that. But I was, I got done with that game, and I was like, oh my god, you could have. You could have run the entire board yeah. uh, on this. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth, cool. and some, some strategies uh, with that one. So, And then on the flip side, you can take teams like Army and Boise State, <laughs> Oregon to, to yeah, yeah. two score when they got they got some good opponents. But anyway, I've digressed. Uh, go ahead and grab the NFL best bet of the week. That is up for Monday Night Football. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Good luck on your bets. Remember, don't go all in. Protect those bank rolls tonight. I know there's two Monday Night Football games. If you're putting in bets, make sure they're they're bets you really truly believe in. They're not bets that you're just putting out there because you're chasing or just because you want to have action on Monday Night Football. So uh, practice patience and cautious and caution. Good luck on your bets, and we will see you ever next time on Props and Parlays today. Bye.